this video is going to have a look at selective breeding and this is one of those uh, processes that generally students have quite a good understanding of the problem that they tend to have is that they're not very good at answering the questions because they forget to hit the key points when they answer the process so that's what we're going to have a look at doing and when you think about selective breeding it is like evolution it's a very simple process with two very 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 important differences the first important difference is that this is artificial so this doesn't happen by chance this, is, this isn't uh this isn't sort of random this is actively chosen and done unnaturally shall we say so it happens over it, it tends to happen a lot quicker but it's much more purposeful the other big difference with evolution is that this is actually focused so this is this is driven a certain direction whereas evolution is random okay so selective breeding evolution is something that happens naturally over many many generations by random chance based on some environmental pressure selective breeding is artificially done by humans in a much shorter time for a much more focused purpose <clears throat> so let's have a look at the process and we'll start with some examples so this one here is corn you'll probably be more familiar with this however not very long ago it looked like this and it was this sort of grassy blade we have over time developed a taste for this and we've then made it bigger and bigger and bigger and we've now got this similarly with boars if you have a look, this is a wild boar whereas this is a, a domesticated pig if you have a look just have a look at its abdomen to start off with look at the size of its abdomen it's much much fatter lots more meat um it's also got a much bigger cranium which suggests it's probably got it's probably developed a much smaller brain it's not having to deal with as many um as many problem solving issues because it's in a pen all day um and, and it's not all the food i mean have a look at this so you've got a wolf now the wolf has been selectively bred into dalshans collies bulldogs and so it's not just about eating there's they're also selectively bred for other purposes i mean dalshans for example are these sort of sausage dogs they are designed to get uh sort of rodents or rabbits and those sorts of things out rabbit holes so they're they're long thin their jaws snap down and they also only really work very well in uh, big groups dalshans that live alone outside of a pack of dalshans tend to be a less happy than ones that are in big packs because they're so used to being bred in these big hunting packs that go out and uh, attack animals and especially the smaller ones that live in holes and i mean these will have different purposes as well and they've been bred to fulfill those purposes so how does this work let's take an example here of trees and these are palm trees let's say i particularly want to get really really tall palm trees. so this is a very very straightforward example and this is the population i have to start off with now in evolution what would happen was some of these would knock off but there's every chance one of the taller ones might and over many generations if taller is beneficial then they will get taller however we speed it up a little so instead of saying right let's just breathe them together what we do is we let them grow and then we actively cull all of these so they cannot breed so we remove their genes from the gene pool therefore that those genes that are in this population no longer exist they might exist to some extent in these so when they breed they all produce these now there are going to still be some shorter ones absolutely but generally the overall population is much higher so you just keep repeating the process so you would then kill these two maybe this one here maybe this one here and <clears throat> i would breed together one two three four so i've got a bigger population now and as a result those four will be bred together and the genes that you want and this is the important phrase the genes that you want are passed on to the next generation the genes you do not want are lost from the gene pool so as a result you get these much more extreme characteristics such as being taller in cows they'll have much bigger udders for example and this process is repeated and repeated and repeated until you start getting the characteristics that you're happy with and even then you keep doing it so even now cattle farmers do it um anyone that these horses are constantly looking for that slight edge 
and they will pay millions to get a horse that has maybe shaved one or two seconds off of its time. 